So it's disgraceful what these people are saying. It is unethical. It is immoral. And they are trying to use these communities for their own benefit. It is a very wrong thing to do. But we can defeat them, I assure you. How do I know that? I know it because I know how these companies work. And I know how the politicians think. And I know how the rivers of money run. And the rivers of money run towards a thing called certainty. They like things to be certain. They hate uncertainty. The rivers of money, if they see a little cliff in the ground, they run away really fast, let me tell you. So if this community makes it clear to the whole of Australia and indeed the world that it does not want this thing at that location where the whales go to carve, where there are plants and, and, and amazing Aboriginal art sites and, and beautiful beaches and incredible sea life, if this community makes it absolutely clear that it doesn't want that, the power that you have is incredible. What I have and other people have who can help you with that is a voice and a commitment and a knowledge of how to make that run through all those corridors and make these people afraid. And when they... When they get afraid, they run away. In Tasmania, they wanted to build one of the world's biggest pulp mills in the Tamar Valley down there. They got every approval they could get from the state government and the federal government, all of them, four years ago. Is there any pulp mill there? There is not. Why? Because we went to the financiers of that project, to the shareholders of that project, to the banks. We got 20,000 signatures. When I say we, I mean all the people involved. I, all, all I do is kind of talk and help facilitate these things. But 20,000 signatures from the ANZ Bank of existing customers who said they would take their accounts away. Not just the you know, protest thing with signatures on it, names, people, the bank knew were their customers and they said they'd take them away and the ANZ Bank for the first time in 20 years did not fund a project of that company guns. And we got the Premier thrown out. He lost his job on the basis of what happened down there. And the chairman of that company, who'd been there for years and said he would never go, he would fight to the death, well, as far as his business career is concerned, he's dead. He's gone. So Michael Cheney, if you're listening, and I'm sure there's a recorder here somewhere, <laughs> you cannot anymore in business ignore ethical practice, moral responsibility, your right, your obligation to deal with local communities, your obligation to perform properly and fairly. Not to lock up wild areas in chains, beautiful wild places that are free. Not to do that. Not to go and rip land apart before you have to, before you have the real approvals that you need. And to treat the local community with respect and with honesty and not to tell them lies. It was said when the Pilbara was opened up, when Karratha was opened up by the Premier of West Australia, that this would bring schools and benefits and jobs for Aboriginal people and local people and everyone would make a lot of money out of it. Well, some people have made a lot of money, but they're not the people who were living in Karratha at that time, as you just heard. This wonderful lifestyle that you have would go. This beautiful wilderness that I love coming to, the last, the last pristine savannah environment left on earth. A rare treasure, a valuable treasure for everyone here because what do people want these days? 
They want to go to the last places that are left on earth like that. And they pay huge amounts of money to go there. You know, dumb people like me who've got a few dollars to spare, we go to the Okavango Delta in Botswana and what do we pay to stay in a tent? $200 a night, $300 a night? A thousand dollars a night. Why? Because we're dumb and we've got the money and we think this is one of the last places on earth where we can do it. Properly promoted, with resources put in, this is what the Kimberley can be. Everybody can have a wonderful life here. They can make plenty of money out of it, inevitably, because it's precious and it's rare and you always end up making plenty of money about things that are precious and rare. So that's what the state government should be doing, investing in that. Your Chamber of Commerce who are supporting this, come on now, look around, you know. Go look a little further. <laughs> this is a beautiful, free, wild place. This is a wonderful, free and open town with extraordinary family life in it that you won't find many places. You know, we live in a beautiful place in Sydney, but when we walk around the harbour now, even on the bush tracks that are remaining, there are signs up, don't fish here, dangerous. Is that what you want here? You, you don't want to be able to go out catch those amazing mud crabs and know they're fresh and clean. You don't want to be able to throw a line in the water and know it's all right. Of course you do. We won't walk away from this, I promise you. We will do whatever we can do. We will drag in anyone we can drag in and I'm already talking to lots of other powerful groups of people and they are going to come and help with this. But we need the Broome community en masse to make it clear that you want this thing moved somewhere else because it's a beautiful, free place. The Kimberley, keep it free. Keep it free, the Kimberley. The Kimberley, keep it free. Yeah.